The National Center for Radio Astrophysics is today a major research organization working in the area of astrophysics globally. NCRA runs two large radio observatories. One is at UTI, which is called the UTI Radio Telescope, and the Giant Meter Wave Radio Telescope, GMRT, which is located close to Pune. With these two world-class facilities, uh, NCRA has gathered a very excellent set of astronomers as well as the technical team, which together make us a frontline institution in the world for the work in radio astronomy and astrophysics. The genesis of what is National Center for Radio Astrophysics today lies in the radio astronomy group of Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, which was set up by Professor Swaroop when he returned to India in 1963. Within two years, they constructed India's first solar radio telescope at Kalyan. The ambitions of the group were rapidly increasing and between 65 and 70, they built what is now known as the UTI radio telescope. And it's a testament to the capabilities and creativity of this group that even about 50 years after its construction, this is still the world's largest steerable radio telescope. And it has led to a lot of really innovative and interesting science. By the early 1980s, the group had already begun to think about a much bigger project. What they conceived and built during the 1990s was the largest low-frequency radio telescope in the world, the Giant Meter Wave Radio Telescope, or the GMRT. It consists of 30 antennas, each of them with 45 meters in diameter, and they are spread out over a 30-kilometer region, making it one of the world's most sensitive interferometers for making very high-resolution images of objects in the sky. The GMRT includes many technological innovations like making the reflecting surface out of thin steel, steel wires which made it very light and also reduced the wind loading effects. Over the last decade and a half, the GMRT has been used by astronomers to study various objects like quasars, pulsars, radio galaxies, supernova remnants, star forming regions and much more. When the GMRT data are combined with data from te other telescopes, they have vastly improved our understanding of the universe. In April 2019, a major seven-year upgrade of GMRT was completed. Changes were made incrementally so the facility could remain open to existing users from across the world throughout the process. Although the original GMRT was designed for restricted frequency bands, uh, five bands with narrow bandwidths sitting between 150 megahertz to 1450 megahertz, we realized that we could actually try and use the entire frequency range from about 100 megahertz to 1500 megahertz and also to increase the instantaneous bandwidth from 32 megahertz up to 400 megahertz. It would also allow the fidelity to observe over a wide range of frequencies, which is very useful for looking for spectral lines from redshifted neutral hydrogen gas at different locations in the universe, as well as much more sensitive imaging of uh, objects and more sensitive observations of pulsars. The team at GMRT developed quality low noise amplifiers operating at room temperatures to meet the broad bandwidth requirements of the upgrade. The existing optical fiber network for transporting signals from the antennas to the central building has also been improved. To mask out strong interference signals from man-made transmissions, the team developed high-quality filters inserted in the receiver system. Database has been acquired, a lot of mitigation techniques have been applied and which is quite novel also and uh, many other observatories also are interested to share this information with us. Other innovations include a next generation back-end receiver system that extracts a maximum bandwidth of 400 megahertz from the signal for all the 30 antennas and processes it using special algorithms achieving a real-time computing throughput of about 15 teraflop we are using GPUs, which is the graphical signal pro processing units in computers for software-based signal processing. Developments include migrating from the brushed DC servo motor technology to the state of the R brushless drive motor technology to make a reliable and stable system. These new facilities are open to users worldwide. People from all over the world, over 40 countries are using GMRT. From India, there are about 50% of the users and the rest of the users from abroad. So main challenge is that we have to keep control room on full operation for a 24 by 7 basis, something like an air traffic control. 
So to get observing time, a scientist has to submit their research ideas as observing proposals to GMRT. These are evaluated and ranked on scientific merit by a committee of experts. Then they make a recommendation to the observatory to allow time. NCRA's own researchers are based at the Pune University campus. Astronomers at NCRA study a wide range of objects. For example, they study the sun, how energetic flares on the sun could uh, affect terrestrial communication, for example. They study stars, how they form and evolve. They study pulsars, how such massive objects are spun up to millisecond periods, how you get intense radio beams from pulsars, how you could use these intense beams to study the interstellar medium. They study galaxies like our own, how they form and evolve. They study massive black holes in the centers of galaxies, what effects those have on the evolution of galaxies, clusters of galaxies, how they collide, how they grow. They also study the intergalactic medium between galaxies. Hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe. It interestingly also emits a radio line. And a telescope like the GMRT can observe this line across a whole range of redshifts. For example, it could study gas in our own galaxy, questions like how warm is this gas. It could study the gas in nearby galaxies, I use that uh, gas in nearby galaxies as a tool to understand the structure and evolution of galaxies, how much dark matter is there in galaxies, what is the distribution of this dark matter. GMRT is an ideal instrument to study the immediate environments of the transients which are most energetic explosions in the universe because this information is unavailable at high frequencies. With GMRT we have studied and understood the progenitor stars of many exotic gamma ray bursts, supernovae and the gravitational wave event. To bridge the gap between transients and their progenitor systems, GMRT also studies the magnetic massive stars to understand their plasma density and magnetosphere. A good number of pulsars are discovered with the GMRT which includes millisecond pulsars and some pulsars which are mildly recycled and some rotating radio transients. GMRT has also contributed to the effort of International Pulsar Timing Array IPTA, for detection of low frequency gravitational waves. We are at a very interesting phase at NCRA right now. The GMRT has just completed a very major upgrade. Its sensitivity has improved significantly. We are already beginning to see a number of new results coming out. So I would expect going forward that we'll see a very large number of new things coming out exploiting this unique niche of the GMRT. We are also eagerly looking forward to an even bigger role in terms of expanding the GMRT further as well as participating in the large international projects such as the Square Kilometre Array which aims to build the next generation radio astronomy facility. Yeah.